much, this is part of Maths Week. Maths Week is ongoing until Friday this week. And uh, for more information on that, you can look at mathsweek.ie or speak to Owen Gill. Um, Owen over here, who's joined us, Guinness, is um, Maths Week coordinator and will be organised on that. And um, I'd like to thank our sponsors as well, um, Discover Science and Engineering, and um, CPL, and also I know Maths Week have a huge number of sponsors as well. So um, Google, Intel, Pharmacy Guard, IBAC, and the IMDA. And I'd like to welcome Rob on this. Thank you very much. feedback I've, I was afraid of. Right, thank you. I might take this off at some point. I'm going to turn that down. Right, good evening. This is actually, um, this is actually the second time I've done a maths talk in a pub. The first time I've done it while dressed like some teenager off Pop Idol, but um, and I, this might be coming off very soon. But can you, can you hear me at the back with this? Is it probably a good idea for me to keep this on? Because it allows me to be hands-free. Um, so this is, yeah, the second pub I've been. Anyone care to guess in what country I did the other maths talk in a pub? apart from people who already know. Yeah. I'll tell you the answer, it's Australia. Okay, so uh, Australia, Ireland, do we see a connect? I don't know, maybe or maybe not. Um, but um, uh, anyway, I'm going to be uh, talking about, uh, well, if we have time, 10 ways to win a maths bet in the pub. And uh, it seems to me, with lots of experience of talking about maths around, the only way you can engage people in this subject is by bringing money into it. So that's, uh, that's why... Uh, uh, I've gone for this theme, and uh, particularly seems relevant, you know, as, uh, as you see this terrible budget that's kind of clawing all this money off you, uh, that tonight is an opportunity for you to find a few techniques for clawing a bit back of it off the, uh, those less, uh, less privileged, less mathematical members of society than yourselves. Um, and if you feel guilty as you're winning money off people, there was a guy called Warren Weaver wrote quite a few great books about probability, and he used to uh, teach people probability using using uh, games a bit like some of the ones I'm showing today. And he, he regarded it as a fee for educating them in, in the principles. So, so, you know, you're just, it's a bit of private tutorial you're, you're giving. Um, and tonight, there will be a genuine chance for you to win some money off me. Um, there will be a chance for you to win a free pint of Guinness off me. Only one of you. I'm not buying everyone in the pub one of those. And, uh, and even a chance for you to, to win a, uh, a Scottish £100 note off me. Now, there will be some of you who think, hang on a sec, they don't do £100 notes in Scotland, but they do, and this is a genuine photocopy of one of those <laughs> Scottish... So, um, no, I will, there will be serious money at stake at some point this evening. So, um, before I kind of launch into showing you some of my favourite ones, incidentally, um, uh, and thank you to my friends at Dubray Books who are doing a fab, fab deal for you tonight. Uh, some of the items... Um, that I talk about are in How Many Socks. It's not a book about gambling, but it's a book about counterintuitive, surprising things, which is where a lot of good gambling comes, uh, comes from. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, if you, if you want to win a bet off someone, you've got to, first of all, engage them in the bet in the first place. So, you know, if I took uh, this table on my right and said, uh, I've got a, got a giant dice here, if I roll it, if it comes up with six, then you win a euro off me, and if it doesn't come up with a six, you pay me a euro, I might think this is a very good game, but I don't think you'll necessarily want to play that. Do you want to play that game? Yeah, yeah. I, th I thought they might be stupid than they look, but they weren't. Okay. So, so they've got to think it's worth their while. Um, so that's kind of point A, and point B kind of goes with it, which is uh, if I now say, you know, um, uh, if it comes up six, you get ten euros, and if it doesn't, you pay me a euro. They're looking very happy about that now, but I mean, what's the point in me playing that game? Because that's clearly a stupid game for me to play. Okay, so, so it's got to be worth their while, but the odds have got to be in my favour. So those are the basic principles of, uh, of a good bet. And um, sometimes the simplest ones are the best. Now, I'm going to start with an absolute genuine, you know, we, we could just bet on, the, on a simple coin, heads or tails, okay? And uh, thank goodness for Sterling staying out of the Euro, because I've still got a coin that's got heads on it. Um, but um, if I toss a coin, we all know, chance of head or tail is 50-50. It's a bit of a boring thing, and it's not a very exciting game. But I'm sure you'll, a lot of you will be mathematical enough to know that if I toss a coin twice, there are four possible outcomes. So it could go heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. Now, which is the most likely of those four outcomes? Slightly trick question. 
you're all sort of, I don't want to answer that one. But uh, you're all thinking, well, they're all equal, aren't they? they? They are all equal. Of course they are all equal. It is just as likely that heads, heads, or heads, tails, or tails, heads, or whatever, will come up. So we're going to just, just play a very simple tails, heads, and heads, heads game, OK? So uh, anyone over here like to play here? I'll, 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 I'll tell you the terms. Even though it's equal chances, we could just say we'll play for, we'll play for this 50p. Let's pretend it's 50 cents, OK? Um, and I could just say, whoever sequence comes up first, you know, we give each other 50 cents. But actually, I'm feeling in a very generous mood tonight. So how about the odds will be, to, to attract someone to play this game, to just get into the swing of it, if, um, if one of you will be heads heads and I'll be tails heads, and if you win, you actually get one euro off me, and if you lose, you only pay me 50 cents. So actually, I'm doubling the odds in your favour to account for any kind of stuff. So now... It's a very, a much better deal there, I hope you'd agree. Anyone like to play this? It's whoever's sequence comes up first, heads, heads is you, tails, heads is me. Anyone like to play me this? So remember, you've got a two to one on. I like to start, you've got, you've got to allow people to win to start with so you can start getting money off them later. Anyone like to play? Yeah, I know. Oh, God. oh dear, what a suspicious bunch. You're going to play. Fantastic, good man. Okay, I need, I tell you what, I'll, I'll keep... Uh, I'll keep track of um, this is why it's done. Uh, you can score. Yeah, John, you'll be a scorer. Fantastic. It's great to have uh, someone in the audience who can help me out. There you go. Right. And I also need an in independent flipper of a coin. You don't say an independent tosser because people interpret that in a Okay. Um, so anyone, anyone good at coin flipping? Andrew, no, I don't trust you. You're a magician. Right, okay. Okay. Okay, so you're heads heads. I'm tails heads. Okay. Uh, and uh, just flip away and, and Jarton will record. Okay, first one is? Heads. I don't like the way this is going. Sorry, that's... Tails. Oh, okay. Tails. Keep, keep recording. Oh, keep recording. Keep recording all of the stories. Like, so keep okay. recording. So we've had heads, heads tails, tails. 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 I've got it. Um, oh, tails again. Tails again. Tails again. Wow, this we could be here all night. Heads. Heads. Ah, tails. Tails. Heads. Tails. Heads has come up. I win. Tell you what, would you like double or quits? No. <laughs> <laughs> so heads. Heads. Tails. Heads. But tails. I'll have that back, please. Actually, you, you, you can keep your fifty cents. I, but I, there's a principle at stake, of course. But uh, you can buy me, buy me a pint later. Oh gosh, fantastic. Okay, I, that, that can, I can raise my stakes later on. It's such an innocent sounding game, this, but as, as, it, as it was played there, you probably saw that it's not a fair game at all, actually. But it sounds so fair, especially when people have had a pint of Guinness or two. Um, remember what I said, first one who comes up, heads, heads or tails, heads, they are equally likely, but that's not the game I was playing there. Um, and there's a lovely way of demonstrating what the real odds of this are, which is, um, so you were heads, heads, and you're thinking, right, okay, you win when heads, heads comes up together. Now, let's suppose we're playing, playing the game, tossing the coin, da-da-da-da, and heads, heads comes up for the first time. Well, if that's the first time it came up, what came before it? Tails. Tails, heads. So, in fact, there's only one possible way in which heads, heads can come up before tails, heads, and that's with the first two flips of the coin, heads, heads. So the chance of winning that is one in four. So whilst my odds of two to one might have sounded generous, the fair odds in that game were three to one. So, um, so it's a nice little one. Now there is a good little variant of this, which if you don't know about it, is definitely worth learning about. It's a thing called penny ante. Anyone here heard of penny ante? It's a great little, right, I'll show you penny ante. Um, with three, it's the same principle, and the math is part of, I'm not going to explain the math because we're in a pub. Um, but um, you know that it, the odds, the, the, the different outcomes of three coins are tails, 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 heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, heads, and heads and all of those things. There's eight possible outcomes there. So penny ante is a game where you pick one of those, any of, of the eight possible combinations, and then I pick one. So it's no longer me forcing it's heads, heads versus tails, heads. You can actually pick. Anyone like to play Penny Ante for the 50 cents that I just... Uh, uh, you, I won't take any more money off you, I promise. I'll, only, I'll be the only one giving it away. But anyone like to just give, me, just give me a sequence on here that you would like to, um, like to bet on? 
which one will come up first. We're playing exactly the same. We'll keep tossing the coin until your sequence or my sequence comes up first. But this time, you can choose any of the eight possible combinations. Anyone like to choose one? Tails, heads, tails. Tails, heads, tails. Fantastic. So you've gone for tails, heads, tails. And I'm going to go for tails, tails, heads. You, me. Yeah? And um, that's all there is to it. Andrew, you've done such a great job. Try again. Here we go. It's tails. I'll do the recording. Oh, really? Oh, you've got to lose sometimes. There is. It is tails. Fantastic. I'm glad there was no. I'm glad there. I'm glad there was no money on that one. Fantastic. There we go. Sorry. Um, oh, no, I did. No, there we are. You can have your friends. Um, it was, it was only 50, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. I can't, I'm not going to be that generous. Right. Um, now, now, the odds, that particular one, that was probably a good choice because your odds were actually something like 30% with that. Um, but the, the, the secret of Penny Ante, I'm not going to attempt to explain it all, but basically whatever your opponent chooses, like, well, tails, tails, heads as an example, what you do is make sure your choice finishes with these two. So tails, tails, and then the one you put at the front is the one that makes this not symmetrical. So if I put tails there, this would be symmetrical, tails, tails, tails. So I put heads here. That's a bit confusing, isn't it? But you basically, whatever they choose, the first two become your last two, and you put an imbalancing one at the front. And that's it, that's all you do. And the odds are anything from 60% to something like 87% of you winning that. So penny ante, it's called penny ante. It's got nothing to do with uh, flipping a penny. That's not where it goes. It's a guy called Penny who invented this game. So. There you are, just a little, little factoid. Now, not everything's... <laughs> right, that was good. I, I like that. Okay, now, <clears throat> just to slip this... Now, not all bets are, uh, require probability stuff. And I was given this. This is a Guinness tie. Anyone see one of these before? I've never seen one uh, before I was given it years ago. I have never worn it. I've been looking for a use for it for years. And finally tonight, the moment has come. So if you want a sort of slightly intellectual bet with someone, who's, particularly if they're a bit half cut, um, uh, is, uh, is you take a tie and you say, right, here's, here's my tie. You're going to say, OK, I've folded over this bit of tie. I bet you that this bit of tie is one third of the tie. I'm going to make, I'm going to make it a bit more exaggerated. Okay? I'm going to bet this is one third of the tie. And I hope you know, they'll sort of take the bait and say, they might even engage in a bet with you. And you say, well, hold on. Before we sort of settle this now and get out a ruler or whatever, um, Matt is about a bit of imagination and taking this further. So we're just going to extend this, uh, our thinking a bit further, and see what its logical conclusion is. So if this is one third of a tie, what's this that's dangling down here? Two thirds, very good. You've not drunk too much. OK, so if I fold it in half, what's, what's this? One third, absolutely. So I'll just, there we are, that's one third. So if this is one third, what's dangling down now? Two, Two thirds, so I'll just fold it in half. So that, that I'm holding up, yeah, I'm not doing any trickery here, is one third. So if that's one third, what's dangling down is two thirds. So this is one third. And if that's one third, what's dangling down is two thirds. And you could keep going on all night, but can you see that basically, We've got three equal pieces there. So it quite clearly is a third, whatever they thought it was. And I've proved it purely logically. So uh, they, may, they may fall for that one, but I wouldn't bet on it, as it were. Um, but it's rather nice, that, isn't it? And it sort of get them thinking, and, uh, and they'll probably go off and buy your pint because they're so confused. But anyway, it's, it's, um, it's just a nice, little, a nice little one, a nice little, little intellectual bet even though it's, they might think you're conning them. So, um, so we won't necessarily guarantee that's going to bring you in lots of money. But I will, um, I will show you another bet that's quite good, especially with a group of people like this. Now, now, a few of you will know about the birthday coincidence thing. It's quite well known, although actually your typical person in the pub doesn't know it. So you could play the traditional version of this. Does anyone know what the classic number is um, for how many people you need in a room for there to be a 50-50 chance that two of them have the same birthday. 23. 23, the magic number. In fact, it's slightly less than 23. 23 is if, if all the birthdays are uniform, but birthdays are actually not uniform. They tend to peak in September, 
um, very slightly, which says something about what goes on in Christmas parties, I think. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that's by the by. Let's say it's 23. But I'm not going to do this birthday thing with 23 because it's a well-known number. Um, uh, you know, you, what you do, especially with a group like this, well, there's 70 or 80 people here, you say 80 people in a room, there's 365 days in the year, so well, there's a one in four chance that two people might have the same birthday in here, some spurious thing like that. But that's not the thing I'm going to do. What I'm going to say is, we're going to play a game of birthday bingo, right? And uh, it's all to do with probability, so probability things can go wrong. But my bet is that at this table, certainly in this corner, but I think at this table, if I'm going to get you to shout out your birthdays one at a time, and if you hear your birthday being called out, I want you to say bingo, OK? We're not, talk and we're not dealing with 23 people here, we're dealing with six people, so I'm really on the, I'm playing on the edge here, uh, but I will, I will incorporate the whole of this corner if I, if I have to. Right, um, it's no one's birthday today, is it? No, that would be, I couldn't imagine anyone coming out for the, well, I could actually. Um, okay, <laughs> would you, so you'd like to just shout what your birthday is? 11th of September. Okay. 27th of May. 27th of May. 7th of February. Probability is a really strange thing, isn't it? You know, you'll all be not to be surprised at all. Right. 15th of April. 15th of April. 15th of May. 15th of May. Oh, Way. 15th of May. Oh, Way. Oh, Way. Oh, Thank oh, you. Oh, I'll pay you later. There's my. No fix. No fix. 15th of May. 15th of May. Brilliant. Who was it? Over here. Oh. Now we now just waiting for a huge anticlimax. <laughs> what? Let's see if there's another one. What's yours? Uh, 18th of October. 18th of October. No bingo. So we just got the one, which is exactly what I predicted, actually. So, uh, so there we are. Fantastic. You just, you just sort of applaud these two for having the right birthdays. But, um, now, what were the chances of that? Actually, I haven't worked it out. What I do know is if there were 50 people in the room, then with six people, the chance of me getting bingo was better than 50-50. So what I reasoned was, with 70 or 80 people, it must be a lot better than 50. But I, I hedged myself by saying I'm going to include this crowd in the corner as well if I need to. But I didn't, didn't need to. So the odds... But that's, that's a nice twist on the old 23 thing, because you think, how could six people have a coincidence? You do the maths afterwards, and uh, you may or may not be able to prove to yourself why it's the case. But it's, it's lovely. Counterintuitive. That is the secret to all of these things. Um, and, uh, well, since I've taken one risk with probability and it worked, I'm going to take another one. Right. These are... I, I wish I'd got a tabloid. I didn't get a tabloid. I need two people to read the newspaper and uh, find some numbers in the newspaper. Do I have a volunteer? All I need you to do is look through the stories and find some, find some numbers from today's newspaper. Uh, this, one's, uh, this one's the Irish Times, and this one is Trinity News. So, um, is that weekly? I don't know. Anyway, hopefully they've got lots of numbers in. In the, in the news stories, there'll be how many people turned up. So, can I find, has someone over here like to be my Irish Times reader? Would you be my Irish Times? Thank you. You can just you can stay there. You can just uh, right. And do I have a do I have a Trinity News reader over here? Fantastic! You're a star. Brilliant. What I want you to do is just flick through the news, the sports section, whatever, and I want you to pick out numbers. Now, there's only one constraint on this. I want you. I want numbers that are counting things, or it can be money, number of people made redundant. It could be the height of a building. It could be any measurement. But I don't want anything to do with age or time or dates. So. 2006 or anything like that, because those numbers are not random. I don't want telephone numbers, and I don't want percentages, OK? But apart from that, <laughs> anything's game. So any statistics from today's stories? And kind of go to the back in the middle of finance pages. Um, so can I have one from? Uh, yeah, well, tell me what the number is, and then I'm kind of interested to know what the context is. I want 10 numbers from you. That's what I want, 10 numbers. Ooh. 800 million. What's 800 million? Uh, it's, um, well, I don't know. <laughs> 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 uh, one person lady, uh, which will be the uh, Okay. It's uh, euros. Euros. Okay, money. Excellent. Uh, right, do we have anything from Trinity News yet? Um, 199. 199. What's 199? Oh, the I can the, the chart position. I can. Oh, very interesting. Okay, excellent. Keep keep opening. Part through the papers doesn't have to be the front page. I could have read the front pages. Uh, so just sort of plow in there. Look for any other numbers. Anyone else who spots a number in there? But I need ten numbers from you all together. So we got we got a, a chart position. We got a number of euros. Either, how many? One hundred. 
100, what's 100? Oh, right. A car model, excellent. Okay, a car model. Anything from Trinity News? You're buried in there? 12. 12, 12, what's 12? Ecstasy, oh fantastic, I, uh, good. I was wondering when ecstasy would come in. Excellent, right. Okay, let's have another one. Okay, I'll have that. How many euros? 1,100 euros, excellent. Okay, fantastic. I've got five, I need only five more numbers. 75 million, I like it. Euros, oh, more money. It's all money in the news today. I wonder why. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll take millions. I'll take billions and trillions. Okay, so it's water from which is targeted by 22 million euros. 22, it's a Waterford, okay. Waterford crystal. 22 million. 22 million, sorry, very important. Um, I'll attach to that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, three more numbers. Two from Trinity. 11,000. 11,000. What's the 11,000? Oh, okay. Oh, the cancer death. <laughs> Quickly on. Okay. Seventy-one dot twenty-two. Seventy-one twenty-two. Yeah. What's that? Uh, it's the number of points. Points for is there some sporty kind of thing? Stock exchange. Oh, right. Oh, that's another money one. Okay. Right. And the final number. I've got nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 20, oh, I don't want percents, just because I said no percents at the beginning. I mean, I, I, I could have taken it by, I'll be honest. Here it comes. It could all hinge on this final story from Trinity News. You don't know what my bet is yet, but that's part of the surprise. I'll squeeze it. Nil, it's the Republic of Ireland. Oh, was that? Nil, oh, ah, ooh, yes. I've never had a zero before. Uh, I'll, give me a, a, a non-zero number to be... Well, I'll take it. Neil, give me another number of goals. Sorry? Yeah. Date, uh, no dates. Don't know dates. I could take no zero goals, but it's slightly... No, OK, I won't take it, yeah. Here it comes. Oh, 34. Babies. Great. Fantastic. So we've got car models, we've got, we've got pop charts, we've got ecstasy and lots and lots of money and waterfall crystal and all that kind of stuff. Fantastic. Okay, now, Jartan, somewhere behind you, yeah. in fact, this is even better than my bet. My, my bet was conservative, but you like to just take out a little piece of paper I put <laughs> next to you before the start of the talk. Oh, this is all genuine stuff. It's it is. Crazy. And what does it say? I put you in the wrong position, or the right position. <laughs> Five of the numbers chosen will begin with a one or a two. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's actually six. And there's a, just behind you, Mr. Photographer, sir, there's another prediction. What does that one say? And none of them will begin with a nine. And none of them will begin with a nine. There is not a single nine there. I thank you very much. Right. Now, now that was a slightly risky bet. My odds were only slightly above 50% for that. But this is a thing. It's really important. Great bet. Because newspapers are everywhere. It's called Benford's Law. And Benford's Law says that statistics that randomly appear in newspapers, atlases, whatever, will tend to begin with a one about 30 odd percent of the time, it's logarithmic. And uh, about 20% of the time they'll begin with a two, and it's only like three or 4% chance that they'll begin with a nine. So I did take a risk with that, but I've never known this fail. If it does ever fail, what you do is you make sure somewhere else you put a prediction that says four of the numbers chosen will begin with a one or a two, but you do need to prepare your pub beforehand. Um, but it never does, it never does. So. Um, so there we are, and it's, and it's fantastic, and it is so reliable. And you can see why I don't allow dates, because of course dates are going to be 1,900 or 2,000 people who accuse you of, you know, all kind of faking. I'd hate anyone to think I was faking anything in here, but, um, but that reminds me of uh, some other fantastic banking tricks where you don't want to rely on probability all the time. You want things that look like probability. Now, 
This is probably, I'm going to ch chance for this and uh, one more before the break. But um, I've got here a perfectly normal pack of cards, except for the fact that they're twice as big <laughs> as any other cards you've ever seen. Let me just take the jokers out. Oh, the jokers are, I've lost the jokers. Oh dear, right. Um, as long as the jokers aren't actually stuck inside. <laughs> okay, right. C can you just verify this is, this is a, this, I mean, this is a, this is a random, this is a, a, a pack of cards. All, all 52 cards are here. Right, now, any, any shufflers in the audience? I need someone to riffle with me, okay? Um, you know, riffling is the kind where you, with your hands, thumbs like that. Um, so um, I need someone, because it's a two-person job, to shuffle a pack of cards like this. Do I have, a, do I have anyone, any poker players or anything else who, who fancies riffling with me? Uh, you're, uh, give them a round of applause. It's the second time you've nobly volunteered. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, what I'm going to do is just deal a pile for you that's big enough for us to riffle together. Okay, so let's just go... Da -da -da. It, it's, I probably, you probably need another 15 or so, don't you, in that? But... Um, doing this very carefully, exactly as you should do it in the pub when you amaze your friends with this. Right, I hope it works. Okay, is that about half, would you say? Yeah. Is that good enough? Okay, right. Now, to riffle big cards, you kind of make your pack square and then tilt them over. Leaning tower, piece of light. Um, yeah, so they're leaning forward, that's right. And put, I think, both hands underneath it. And I'm going to get the people at the front who can see this to give us marks out of ten for this shuffle, okay? Let's go. Right. Yeah. All right, okay. This is a very harsh audience, so let me just show those at the back. This is it. Marks out of ten. Now, ten would be an absolutely perfect shuffle where they interweave one after the other, and, and one would be just two piles went flump, flump on top of each other, okay? So three is very low. I think there's a lot of inter interweaving going on there. Yeah, marks out. Yeah, eight. Oh, that's, that's very kind, Owen. Eight. Six, seven, eight. The point is, it's not 10 out of 10, and it's not 1 out of 10. It's somewhere in between. We're very general. I'll take an average. It's about a 7 out of 10 shuffle. Right, 7 out of 10 shuffle. What is the chance, a bit more probability for you, what's the chance if I took the top two cards off that there's one red and one black? It's a bit like heads and tails, so we've all done this one already. It's 1 in 4. Oh, sorry, 1 in 2. 1 in 2. Heads to red, red, black, or black, red. So you shouldn't be too surprised. Black and red, okay. But you might be a little bit more surprised if the next two are one red and one black. And you might actually start saying, what's the chances, what's it worth if the next two are one red and one black? And it actually gets a bit boring. You see at the back, one red, one black. In fact, that's not the thing that you really want to screw money out of people for. Because what you really want to do, we'll just put them back. We're, we're genuinely reassembling this, aren't you? Because if we take the top four cards, what are the chance that of the top four cards, there's one of each suit, one club, one heart, one diamond, one spade? That's not a half, is it? It's less than a half. One club, one heart, one diamond, one spade? After an, a seven out of ten riffle shuffle, what about the next four? One, two, three, four. One of each, one of each. I've not done any, you, you, you've seen absolutely, I'm not doing a conjuring trick here. I'm just genuinely seeing, showing you the result. What's the probability? What's it worth? Next four, one of each. Yeah. Now that's, that's quite surprising, but that's not actually what my bet is. Because if we look at the 12, I've just taken three lots of four off. And if we looked at those 12 cards that we've just taken off from this seven out of 10 riffle shuffle, what is the chance that every one of those cards is different? There's an ace, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, an eight, a nine. Oh, there's no 10, Jack. Queen, king, and ace. What was missing? Ten was missing. What's the chance that this one, in your seven out of ten riffle shuffle, is a ten? What's it worth? How many clubs? Ten of clubs. And just to show it wasn't a fluke, if we take the next four, that's interesting, six, seven, eight, ten. One, two, three, four. Ace, two, four, jack. Just got to work out what's missing. Ace, two, four, jack. Those four are all different. The next ones, three, king, nine, and five. There's something missing from that lot. I think it's a queen. Is it a queen that's missing? I think it is. So what's the chance that this one's a queen? This is where you get in another round off them 
because it is the Queen of Clubs. How about that? Now, thank you very much. Well done. Except not bad for seven out of ten. Now, this, this is something known as a Gilbreath shuffle. I was actually shown it by a mathematician, but when I showed it to a magician, he said, you shouldn't show this to anyone because this is brilliant, this is magic. But it's not magic, it's, ma it's maths. It, it's, there's, there's a little bit of preparation required if you're going to do this in the pub. Um, I'll tell you the simple version, which is if you arrange the pack in advance such that it goes red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, all the way through, as I did, because when you fan it out, no one can tell you've done that. Then, do you remember when I created the second pack I dealt from the top, so I reversed the pack. So a pack that did go from the top, red, black, red, black, red, the other pile, or from the bottom, will be in reverse. So if one goes red, black from the bottom, the other one goes black, red from the bottom. And that is very important. But after doing that, it doesn't matter how good or how bad your riffle shuffle is, it just works. And proving it is a bit boring for being in a pub, so I'm not gonna prove it. Um, but, but I'll tell you what, you'll be thinking, as scientist-minded, some of you, that, um, Surely it must be possible to get a red and a red together or a black and a red together. And it is, but they're always in different pairs. So if I took off from the top, the top two might be black red and the next two might be red black. But those two reds that are next to each other got separated into different pairs. So yes, your intuition is right that, that they might come together, but They'll never come off the top at the same time. It's the most brilliant thing. And if I were to choose one thing to show people to say maths is kind of can blow your mind, it is the Gilbreath shuffle that I do. So use it sparingly, but have that pack of cards prepared for when you want to win some serious drink or something, or just respect of, uh, of somebody in the pub. Right, um, now. Okay. Now, just looking at my watch, I'm going to be very strict on time because I was told to be so. So um, it is that sort of witching hour and time for another drink. So after, after the break, I am more than happy to uh, take any questions and or show you a couple of other ways of winning money. I've got a couple of novels, people looking right, I want more. Or anyway, either way, how long have we got before we, uh, we reconvene? I'll give it about 15. About 15 minutes. Okay, so uh, 15 minutes and we'll be back for some more. So thank you very much. So we need to do a bit of, um, I've got a calculator here. So it's all to have, have you got a mobile phone with a calculator? That's good. But I need someone to do some calculating for me. Anyone that's take, uh, uh, I'll put the calculator on it. Someone on the table can just work things out. What I need is the, uh, the room to generate a three digit number that's random. And the way of making sure it's random, and I couldn't have planted it in the audience, is to take three different digits from people and make a three digit number out of it. Okay, so uh, someone like, what, a number between one and like four, seven. seven at the back, four, seven, nine. nine. Okay, four, seven, nine. Okay, four, seven, nine. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is four, seven, nine. Um, take that number, we're just going to play around with that number to come up with something and then we're going to see if something very spooky happens. Okay, so if the number is 479, uh, let's just reverse it. So that would be 974. Okay, and could you just do the, do the, do the math? What's 974 take away 479? Four nine five. Okay, great stuff. And now, since we've reversed it once, let's kind of get it back to the way, the right way around. So we'll reverse it again. Five nine four. Can you just add those two together? So four nine five plus five nine four. Uh, okay, fantastic. One thousand and eighty nine. Okay, excellent. Now, um, I happen to have randomly this book available at fourteen ninety nine at the back of the room. Now, uh, can I ask somebody to? Um, just open the book up, and since we've got this, oh, uh, what the heck, 1089, um, go to page 10. Just check that all the words are different. They, they are all different now. I didn't just write math, 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 math in the whole book. Okay. 
Are all the words there? Yeah, okay. So go to page 10. Is it, it's got a page 10. Is there text on page 10? Yeah. Okay. Can you count down to the eighth line of text? Okay. And in the... Assuming it may not have nine... If it's got nine words, can you count to the ninth word? Okay. And just tell us what word it said. What did it say? It says anyone. Good. What an amazing coincidence. I've had this up all evening. Isn't that incredible? It, does, it doesn't say anyone, 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 anyone through the book. What the hell's the chances of that? It's, a, it's the only time anyone appears in the entire book. Isn't that incredible? So um, quite how you stage it. But, you know, you, you, say David Blaine does this by having the words sort of like behind a car windscreen or whatever. But uh, I do it even more blatantly by having it in front of you all night. How did I know you were going to pick 974? absolutely stunning. If you're stunned by that, then clearly anyone you meet in the pub is going to be stunned by it. If you're not, I still think people are going to be stunned by that, actually. Um, this, is, this is known as, for reasons that might be obvious, the 1089 trick, okay? <laughs> and that's because, that's because I knew you'd end up. So whatever number you pick, 974, reverse it, take the difference, 495, reverse it again, add them up, the answer is always 1089. I'm not going to prove it. Uh, it the, there are exceptions. If you'd given me 979, I hope you can see that this would not work. Um, and in fact, if you'd given me 978, take away 879, the answer is 99. So I'd have had to write 099, which is, doesn't look very cool when you're trying to be spontaneous. So, so when, you, when people give you the three digits, just make sure the first and the last, when you actually write it down, are separated by at least two, okay? But other than that, um, if you, you do need to check what's on page 10, line eight, <laughs> word nine before as well. So there's a bit of preparation, but with all these things, you don't make money for nothing. You know, the property bubble is over. So, uh, um, <laughs> so anyway, um, that's, um, but there we are. That's next best to the property bubble. Um, and uh, the anyone trick clearly Choose the book for the most appropriate word you can find on page 10, and 10 line 8, word 9. So that's a, that's a good one. Um, yeah, any questions? Um, any requests? For, uh? Why does it work? Why does it work? Oh, okay, very good. God, you want some maths? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll sort of show you why it works. A bit of algebra. Yeah, well, you asked for it, Andrew. <laughs> um, right, a three-digit number, A, B, C is the same as saying 100A plus 10B plus C. So when we reverse it and make it into CBA, it's 100C plus 10B plus A. So when you take away the smaller from the bigger, you get 100A plus C, take away 100C. It kind of comes out as 99A take away 99C equals 99 times A minus C. So we know that the number you get when you subtract one from the other is going to be a multiple of 99. And maybe, I'm not going to go into all the detail, but it maybe doesn't stretch your imagination too much to say this, which is one less than 100, is going to have some interesting properties whereby one number goes down by one every time you multiply it by two and three. So the multiples of, of, one, of 99 are... You know, 198, 297, 396, 495... So there's always compensating one side for the other. Adam, add the reverse to it, 1089. That's basically how it works. But uh, I don't advise you to go through the algebra when you're taking your winnings off other people. Uh, that's just for your, that's for just your own personal enlightenment. So, um, so that's that one. Um, okay, I can I can sense in the room that no one wants to ask any questions. You want to see, you want to have a chance of winning a pint of Guinness. Okay. <laughs> This is it, genuine, absolutely genuine chance of winning a pint of Guinness here. And uh, before any experts on the Monty Hall problem chip in here, this is not Monty Hall that I'm showing you. It's a bit like Monty Hall, but it's not Monty Hall. And for a few of you will say, what the hell's Monty Hall? And that's fine, you don't need to know anything about it. Uh, but would anyone like to win a pint of Guinness? Absolutely genuine. To make it a bet, it would have to be if you win, you get a pint of Guinness, and if you lose, you buy me a pint of Guinness. I, I'm, I'm, I won't push that one, but if you want to buy me a pint of Guinness later, fair enough. That's fair. But, uh, but you might win a pint of Guinness. So uh, anyone like a genuine good chance? One. 
<laughs> Good man. Okay, this table is what a fantastic table I got on my right. Brilliant. Okay, right. For those of you at the back, don't get too close to these because I don't want you to no, no sniffing what's in it. Okay, I've got ten buckets here: A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. And under one of these is a pint of Guinness. Okay, I would like you to pick one, not one, but two of these buckets, and just gently place your hands on the buckets because you will own those buckets. Okay, so choose any two buckets from those ten, and those become your buckets. Okay, fine. That's A and E. Now what I'm going to do is turn over seven buckets. Ooh. That don't have Guinness under them, okay? And I do it at random just to make you feel like you've really chosen very interestingly. What's the chance of you having the Guinness, eh? D, nothing there. I. I like F. Okay. So you've got two out of six. Oh, so your odds are improving all the time. Isn't it fantastic? B. Whoa! This is incredible, what is your chance? There really is a Guinness under here. Um, Jay, we're down to, we've got three, so you've got two buckets you're holding and there's only three left on the table. Let's go for C and let's go for G. Right, there's one on the table, you've got two. Now, a lot of people in this situation, when I say you've got a chance of swapping to H, would be kind of tempted to swap, but don't, you know, either way, you know. So would you like to stick with the two you've got? Now we all know a bit about probability, so two to one. Two to one. But you know what against this? <laughs> I do. But actually, it's entirely up to you. You can stick or you can swap. You can ask the audience. No, I'm not going to ask you. You ask the audience here. <laughs> No, 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 no. You, you either own those two, you own those two, or you can swap for one. So it's, you know, but, but I'm just presenting you with the, the information. Do you, do you, you know, the question is, and I did say I'd let you, why am I offering you a chance to, two to one? You're going to really kick yourself if you make the wrong decision here. The question is, what is the wrong decision? You could really regret, you could really regret not getting that Guinness. But anyway, final answer. I need from you. <laughs> You're gonna switch. Yeah. Hey, no, no, before, before. Okay, it's okay. Stick. Yeah. No. Just, just stay with that. You want it, and, and final answer. You want to swap? I want to swap. Okay. Let's just take a view from the audience whether how they feel about this. We're not. Gonna, I'm not gonna force you to change again. Who thinks he's making a good decision here? Who thinks he's making a bad decision here? Yeah, it's about he's swapping. Yeah. It's a kind of it's, it's split. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you want to swap though, you said if I swap. Okay, now it's, it's kind of perverse here that he's got a one, he's got a two thirds chance of it being under there and he's swapping for one in three chance. So let's have a look, stand to one side, the moment of truth. It's not quite the moment of truth because there may not be any beer under here. Oh. Hang on a sec, this could be your chance to win Fantastic. There you go. Well done. Always make sure that that client has been bought by someone else in advance. So thank you, Andrew, very much for that. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a lovely one. It's a variant on the... What was the chance? Did you work out what the chance was that it was under your two? Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, it's nothing to do with two thirds, one thirds. The chance it was under those two was one in five at the beginning. And those chances did not change. Now, if you've never come across Monty Hall, you'll be particularly surprised by that, but even if you have, it's kind of surprising. Why should it be under the other one? But I knew where the beer was and I announced that. That's very important. So the chance it was under this one, which represents all the other eight, was always four-fifths. It never changed. So it was five, or was it four times as likely to be under here. But there's something nice about, it really is painful, isn't it? Give up two. To take one. It's even more painful when you make the right decision and it turns out it is under one of those two. I was hoping that would happen tonight, but you know, you can't win them all. But anyway, well done. That's, uh, that's... Right. The question is now where can you get uh, 10 buckets for you? <laughs>
Buckets. Ten Buckets, yeah, the local garden centre is perfect. That's where I got mine from. These have served me very well. With yeah. The With the letters on them. With the letters on, yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked around for a G for ages, but finally, you know. So, um, yeah. Yeah, cups work well, beer glasses don't work well, for obvious reasons, but um, actually I did, I once did this, I, did, I, did a, I was asked to go and give a talk at Pentonville Prison, I was a day visitor, and, um, and I used plastic cups, which I stuck on an overhead projector because it was the only flat surface, and I stuck them all on there, and there was something, there was a coin under one of the, one of the cups, and I got a guy up from the audience, I said, right, um, we're going to play a game, you have to work out which one it's got the coin under it and you win it if you get it right. So uh, you reached around the back and switched on the overhead projector to see this silhouette. I thought, you're not in Pentonville for nothing, Sunshine. You know, there's, a, there's, a, there's a... But it was very neat. That was the same place where I asked the audience for an example of a coincidence. And one of the guys said, I've got a coincidence. Everyone in here got nicked. I thought that was a great answer. Um, so, um, yeah. Anyway. Um, I've got. I've not got many. L l anyone got anyone like it? any any requests? Any any other questions? I can show you one more thing. Okay. One more thing. Oh yeah, I, that's that's right. Of course, that's the Scottish hundred pound note. Yeah. Photocopy of. Except we'll make it real. We'll make it. We'll we'll get. We'll put. Is this genuine? Ten euros. It looks a bit sort of fake to me, but yeah. it's, it's real, right? Good. Um, I do need to get some cards out. This is this is a Darren Brown. Original. This is what made Simon Singh extremely angry. Um, so I just need um, I just need to get some cards out of here. Simon Singh, you must. Um, Simon Singh, uh, popular science writer who um, who is uh, very anti Darren Brown because Darren Brown's programs were presented as being science programs and about psychology and. Uh, he is a trained magician, and sometimes it rather blurred as to what Darren Brown was really doing. Was he doing psychology or magic? Of course, there's a lot of overlap between the two. But excuse me a second while I um, just get uh, enough cards out of here to be able to do this, because we're going to play a game of poker. But it's great poker, this. Not the, ki not the kind I recommend that you play in the pub, because you, I'm not gonna, you're not going to have to lose anything. You can only win. But... Um, but in the pub, clearly, you'll want to have some stakes on, on this. Um, hang on a second. I just need to be sure I've got ten cards. One, two... I need an ace. Excuse me. It's nice to have aces, because they kind of up the stakes a little bit. Um, wow, there must be an ace in here somewhere. There is one. Good. I've got aces. One, two... Three, one, two, three. Fantastic. Okay, should have ten cards here because so we're playing a very simple version of poker, where I've already got my ten cards here. And uh, lest you need any reminding, the in poker, five cards each, and you, um, you whoever has the better hand clearly wins. Uh, or the best, one of the best hands you can get is a full house, which is three of a kind and two of a kind. I I'm sure I don't need to tell you this. Um, Next comes a flush and a straight somewhere in there. Um, you're not going to be able to get flushes and straights probably with the cards I've got here. But then uh, three of a kind, two pairs, a pair. And if neither player's got even a pair, then it's um, highest, uh, highest card that you've got. Aces are high, by the way, okay, in this version of, of poker. So I, uh, we're going to play three rounds of poker, a demo game, and then the stakes get higher. And you can only win you cannot lose this poker uh the 10 euros will uh, will feature after we've played our first little trial game so you will have a chance to win this 10 euros what i'm banking on is that you fall for the usual trap that people fall for when they're playing this but you know clearly my fingers are crossed now i need anyone like to play me a game of poker you cannot lose remember you cannot lose he's got a fat good man I love this table. Right, okay. Um, right. So let me, let me just deal out just a little demo game. Oops. So let me just clean the Guinness off this table so I don't ruin my cards. Mark the excellent. Mark the cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, excellent. I think that's pretty well clean. Okay, so two, three, 
four, five. Okay, so just look at your cards. Okay, I've got a pair of kings. What have you got? Uh, pair of aces, pair of nines. Pair of aces, pair of nines. Okay, so you win that one. That's just a trial, just to demonstrate that uh, this is uh, this is absolutely legitimate poker. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay, let's play. Um, let's play for um, a pint of Guinness. Okay. Right. How are you done? One pair. Oh, pair, pair of. Aces. Pair of aces. I've got two pairs, two two kings, two nines. Okay, <laughs> bye bye. Now, now people in the audience might think feel I rigged the pack, which I did. So, uh, <laughs> so, so to make sure, make sure I don't rig the pack. This is where the incredible psychology comes in because now, okay. I'm going to not only allow you to choose your cards, but I'm even going to show you some of the cards, and you can say, yes, I want it, or no, I don't want it, okay? Um, and, okay, that's your pile. That's my pile. And it's normally the third card that's critical in this. Don't feel under any pressure, however, okay? Um, would you like to see the third card, or would it be less pressurizing if you didn't see it? Okay, okay, it's the King of Hearts. Would you like the King of Hearts? I can have it. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, it's only the, the only third time that's happened. But, um, okay. <laughs> right. W the next card. Do, do you want to see it? Sure, why not? Yeah. It's the King of Spades. Do you want it? <laughs> Ooh. You'll keep yeah. that one. Ooh. Uh, very interesting. Right. Next card. I'm not going to show you the next card. Would you like it or not? You can keep it. I can keep it. Great. Uh, okay. I've got, I've got four cards left. Uh, five cards left. That's just as well. And you, got, you need three of these cards. Which, would you like this one? Okay. Would you like this one? I'll take that one. Okay. I haven't said what's on, what's on this, by the way, did I? This is, this is for the 10 euros or the 100 pounds Scottish note, either way. Oh, okay, no. Yeah. Okay. You've got four cards. That was a little distraction there to just get your mind out of this, the pattern it was forming because I was a bit nervous about that. Yeah. There's three cards left. You can have any one of those, and clearly I'm going to have to have the other two. No pressure at all. There's only 10 euros or 100 pounds Scottish note. Okay. I'm having these two. Right. Take a look at your hand. How have you done? Uh, you won. Oh, what you, what you got? A, a pair of aces. A pair of aces. Yeah. Two kings, two nines. Bad luck and a single to nave. Give him a round of applause, though. Fantastic. <laughs> the, the 10 euro stays firmly in my pocket. It's always that third card, you see. That's where it all hinges, except, of course, that's complete bollocks. It doesn't hinge on any. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go into the detail. It's all written up on Simon Singh's website in an article he wrote, damning the work of... Satan called Darren Brown, but <laughs> suffice to say, okay. suffice to say that uh, it was all, yeah. it was all <clears throat> in under my control because I knew which card of the ten cards that were here, three lots of three and a singleton. It was that singleton that matters, and uh, the singleton card I dealt to myself the first time, and I dealt to you the second time. And the third time you had complete free choice, except of course I said that's your pile and that's my pile. So uh, everything else that happened there after doesn't matter one jot. But if you're curious, science is all about curiosity. So if you're curious enough to know how it works, look up the article and it's all written up. Most stunning little uh, little poker trick. Thank you very much for this table. Deserves a round of applause. For. Right, and I think uh, I think we're sort of. Uh, I can't, I'm running out of material actually, so I'll quit while I'm ahead. I think we've had ten. Yeah, so uh, well, thank right. Thank you so much. That was very interesting. I think you'll all agree, and it's really entertaining and Good, thank you. very, very good. So, oh, fantastic! More alcohol, brilliant. Excellent. Thank you. At the point on that, I know Owen will um, have a chat. Maybe if anybody wants to discuss things about like, uh, other events coming for Maths Week. Um, I know one in particular you mentioned this Friday, non read prayer. Yeah, Henri um, Dupre, who uh, spoke last month at uh, the yeah. Alchemist Cafe, he's giving a uh, talk on Friday in the museum in Kildare Street at lunchtime. It's Tri Gaelga, it's in, uh, in, in Irish on uh, Ireland's fe most famous mathematician, William Rowan Hamilton. So if anyone's interested to go along to that. Uh, a lot of the events are booked out. Uh, we have Professor Jose Maria Montesinos here. Tonight he's speaking in the Chester Beatty Library tomorrow. Unfortunately, that's booked out, but there are still um, events uh, on that are uh, 
available on the website. So uh, you're more than welcome to uh, to come up and ask me any questions later on. So thank you.